Open up your King James Bible to 1 Timothy chapter 4. This is Paul's letter to young Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit, what Spirit? The Holy Spirit. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed, that means listening, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. That's scary, people. When your conscience is seared with a hot iron, well, take a look. What do you do with a steak when you want to keep it nice and juicy? You throw it on the grill and you try to sear it on both sides, right? So that all the juices don't, uh, you know, leak out or whatever, you know, you sear it. When somebody's conscience is seared with a hot iron, that means God doesn't convict them of sin anymore. I mean, once that happens, you're done. You're on your way to hell. I mean, you're still alive, but your days of repentance, it's like the ark of Noah in the days of the flood. There was a time, it says, the hand of God closed the door. And once that door is closed, that's it. It's over. You might live for another 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, but there's no repentance. There's no salvation. Once your conscience is seared with a hot iron, that's it. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. So what are they going to be teaching? Verse 3. Forbidding to marry. Okay, forbidding to marry. Let's take a look at that. The big forbidding to marry that I know of is in the uh, Roman Catholic Church among the priesthood. You know, Catholic priests are not allowed to marry, right? And uh, from what I understand, Buddhist monks also don't marry. Now, there's a lot of people that are, uh, a lot of men that are Buddhist monks, and they might do it for a while, and then they, they get out and, you know, they, they get married. You know, but if you want to remain a Buddhist monk, you stay unmarried. And I'm sure there's others that I don't know about, okay? So, giving heed to seducing spirits, doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience, conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, vegetarianism and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Now, some people will say, well, you know, that's talking about all meat. I, I don't quite see it that way. You know, God gave us a list of clean animals and unclean animals. And, you know, I, I just, I'm sorry, I just don't think rats and vultures are something that we should eat, be eating and not to be refused. I, you know, but hey, if you want to eat rats and vultures... I'm sure it's not a salvational issue. I mean, you know, let's face it. But let's take a look at this. Paul says that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, speak expressly that in the latter times, the last days, 
Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. They're, that they're going to be speaking lies and hypocrisy. Consciences seared with a hot iron. What are they going to be teaching? Forbidding to marry. You know, there's a... I kind of wonder if this is what this transgenderism and this sodomite marriage and lesbianism and all this stuff, if it's going along this lines, you know, if this is just like the first stepping stone, that eventually they're going to, you know, not want people to get married. I mean, you know, oh, let's overpopulation. Let's save the planet. I mean... Let's, you know, uh, who who was it that did marriage in the, you know, in the first place? After all, in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. See, it wasn't good for Adam to be alone, so he created Eve, not Steve. Eve. Some people don't get that. Verse 20. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air, to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found an help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. What do you know? This is the uh, first case of uh, medical anesthesia, right? And he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Was this uh, cloning? DNA? And the rib which the Lord God hath taken from man made he a woman... And brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Husbands, wives, remember something. You're supposed to be one flesh. It's not a contest to see who's right the most often. I'm going to do a Bible study on uh, duties of a Christian wife one day. But, uh, yeah, you're supposed to be one flesh, supposed to be like uh, pull in the same direction all the time, you know, like uh, two horses pulling a buggy, you know, in the same direction, pulling, pulling the same load. So, God created the first marriage, forbidding to marriage and commanding to abstain from meats. You know, it's interesting. There's a big thing, and I, this has been going on for quite a while. The New Age movement in the 80s, I noticed, they were pushing uh, this vegetarianism. And there's nothing wrong with vegetarianism of and by itself, the Hindus in India, the country of India, they're real big on it, and the New Agers are real big on it, but they make a religion out of it. Oh, you ever heard of a holy holy cow? Well, that's India. And they don't want to eat animals because, hey, it that, that cow might be my reincarnated Uncle Fred or Uncle Patel. I should say, Ahmad Patel. So, you know, they make a religion out of vegetarianism. And believe me, I am I am so against animal cruelty. I mean, uh, my dad rescued so many dogs. It's just unbelievable. And he had pity on cats too. I mean, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's terrible. Some of the conditions the farm animals are in. I'm not a big fan of, uh, corporate 
cattle farming and what have you, animal farming, I think it's horrible that uh, chickens live in cages and they can't even turn around. I mean, I think that's horrible, you know. But, um, but you know, the Lord, when the Lord took Noah and told him to build the ark, he told him to take two of every unclean animal and seven of the clean animals to be eaten. Did you know that? All right, uh, go to Genesis chapter 7, chapter, uh, chapter 7, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean, by two, the male and his female. Of fowls also of the air, by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. So why are they taking two of the unclean and seven of the clean? Because they're going to eat some of them after the flood. There ain't, there's not going to be any plant life after the flood is over. So, you know, they're going to have seven males of cattle and seven females, cows. Uh, seven bulls and seven cows. And you better not eat, uh, you know, you could eat six of the males, right? Uh, you could eat six of the males and maybe one or two of the females. I don't know. But you got to keep, uh, you know, at least two of each one, right? So that they have kids, children, or, well, you get the idea. All right. Now, if you want to know what animals the Lord said were okay to eat, now you got to realize something. I believe, my opinion, is that before. Adam and Eve partook of the tree of good and evil. I believe that they were just, they were vegetarians. However, after the fall, I believe things changed drastically. God cursed the ground. And I believe, now you got to realize, um, when Adam and Eve saw that they were naked, God took an animal and slay, slew it. He killed it. I kind of, I'm of the opinion it was probably a lamb. You know, he shed blood. And then he took uh, animal skins and made them clothing of animal skins. And I wonder if they, you know, they might have eaten it. I don't know. You know, it's, I mean, can you imagine? Adam and Eve had never seen death. And then all of a sudden the Lord killed an animal or had an animal killed? Um, how symbolic is that? <laughs> you know, he, he told Adam and Eve that in the day uh, ye eat thereof, ye shall surely die. Well, guess what? Oh, yeah. All right, well, in Genesis 2 and verse 17, God said, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Well, guess what? After they took of the fruit, they died. All right, so Leviticus chapter 11. This is the clean and unclean food chapter. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but we're going to, you know, take a look. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are of the earth, that are on the earth. 
whatsoever parteth the hoof and is cloven footed and cheweth the cud. Among the beasts, among the beasts that shall ye eat. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud or of them that divide the hoof, as the camel, because he cheweth the cud but divideth not the hoof. He is unclean unto you. And the cuny, because he cheweth the cud but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean to you. And the hare, rabbits, because he cheweth the cud but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. You know, it's interesting. Um, when the Europeans first came to the New World uh, up in Canada, they were catching rabbits, you know, rabbit and a hare. A hare is just a very large rabbit. And um, the uh, explorers were, there were rabbits everywhere, and they were easy to catch. And they were eating them, and their bellies were full. But you know what? They died of starvation over time, like in the winter, because that was all they were catching and eating were, were rabbits. They died of starvation because the rabbits lack, um, it's like a, a, like a fat or something like that. It, it causes a, an essential nutritional deficiency. You know, I'm not saying if you eat rabbit, you're going to die. But if, if that's the only thing you have to eat, you slowly starve to death, even though your belly's full. I mean, it's terrible. You won't do that with chicken. You won't do that with pig either. So, uh, verse 7, And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be, uh, and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. Of their flesh ye shall not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. Okay. So, let's take a look at swine real quick. All right, let's turn to Matthew chapter 15 and verse 1. For those of you that don't know it, the Jewish encyclopedia says the Pharisees are the foundation of modern Judaism. So when you read Pharisee in the Bible, you're talking about modern-day Jews, according to the Jewish Encyclopedia, which is their, one of their authorities, right? Then came G to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? You know, don't traditions and elders. Not the words of God, the tradition of the elders. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Well, duh, is it is it a bad idea to wash your hands before you eat? No, of course not. But they probably had a certain way of doing it. You know, you had to wash your left hand first, and then you had to wash your right hand, and then you had to dip your left hand in the water, and then the right hand in the water. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. But he answered, Jesus, but he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. When we're talking about cursing your mom or mother or father. You're talking about putting a curse on them, like a death curse, you know, like like you're you're a witch. You're putting a curse of death on them. You're not just saying, you know, oh damn it, mom. You know, we're not talking that. We're talking about putting a curse. So, the Bible says, "Let him die the death," but ye say. Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. In other words, they're saying, no matter what you do, it's a gift. You know, if you beat your mother and father on the head with a hammer, why, that's a gift. You're giving them a gift, a hammer to the head. 
All right, so, but ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. In other words, the Bible says they should be put to death, but here it is, the tradition of the elder says, Oh no, they're going to be made free. Thus have ye made the, the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. See, their traditions, they considered them over and above the commandments of God. Verse 7, ye hypocrites. Wow. Somebody just called the Pharisees hypocrites. Ye hypocrites. Well did Isaiah, that's the Greek rendering of Isaiah, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, the people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain, vain means worthless, but in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Isn't that what they are? Uh, we, we were talking about in the latter days, doctrines of devils? Verse 10. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man. That's right. When you eat a pig, that's not what defiles you. Eating a pig? No. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth. This defileth a man. It's not what goes into your mouth that defiles somebody. It's what comes out of their mouth. That's what defiles them. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard the saying? Oh, yeah. Jesus offended those Pharisee Jews. He offended them. Verse 13. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind teachers of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Uh, come on, Peter, don't you get it, you know? Okay, verse 17. Do not ye yet understand that, whatso what, that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the draught? In other words, you know, what goes in the mouth goes in the belly and comes out the backside, right? Goes into the toilet. Verse 18, But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies, these are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. Just because you don't wash your hands, that, don't, that doesn't defile you. The things that come out of your mouth, false witness, blasphemies against the Lord, you know, that's what defiles you. All right, turn to Matthew chapter 8, verse 28. Matthew 8, 28. And when he, Jesus, and when he was come to the other side into the country of the Gergesenes, there met him two possessed with devils. Two people, demon-possessed, right? There met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs. Oh, yeah. 
the devils, the demons, they love to hang out by the tombs. They love to hang out in graveyards. There met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? And there was a good way off from them, and heard of many swine feeding. So there's a, a herd of pigs, right? So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. In other words, suffer means allow. If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. So here it is, the devils are saying, You know, if you're going to cast us out of this man, let us go into the, the pigs. Verse 32, And he said unto them, Go. And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine, and behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. Do you know that even the pigs didn't want to be possessed with devils? They didn't want to be demon-possessed. They would rather die. Isn't that something? Verse 33, And they that kept them fled and went their ways into the city and told everything and what was befallen to the possessed of the devils. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they besought him that he would depart out of their coasts. So here it is, he cures, you know, he cast out these devils. They go into the herd of swine. The swine kill themselves, and all the people come out of the city and uh, and they asked Jesus, uh, can you leave? We don't really want you here. You know, it's better that these guys are possessed with devils or, well, two. I don't know if they were guys. I don't know if they were gals. I don't know if it was a guy and a gal. I, I don't know. I don't know. It just says two. So the city didn't want them anywhere near them. Now, why did the devils want to go into the herd of swine? You know, I wonder if there's a spiritual aspect to uh, not eating swine, pig. You know, hey, I love bacon. I love bacon as much as anybody. Okay? And the Greeks, the New Testament was written in Greek. Paul went to all those Greek cities, Ephesus, Ephesians. Colossi, Colossians, uh, Galatia, Galatians, uh, Thessalonica, Thessalonians. I mean, the Greeks were, they ate pig, let's face it. But yet the Lord saved them. You know, so, but I wonder if there's a spiritual aspect to not eating swine's flesh. Maybe the, the swine you're eating was possessed with a devil. I don't know. I had somebody once mention to me that they were wondering if domesticated pigs were some kind of a cross between wild boar and humans. And I thought, well, that sounds strange. But, you know, the thing is, they've done genetic studies on pigs and they're they're, in some ways, their genetics is very close to humans. I mean, there's a lot of animals that get, get diseases that cannot be transmitted to man. But there was a medical study done, and there are 100 known diseases that pigs can directly transmit to man. Over 100. And there's two, over 200 sus suspected, but they haven't done the definitive studies biological studies to prove, you know, that, so, I mean, there's 300 possible diseases that pigs can directly transmit to man. Uh, you've heard of swine flu, right? 
Plus, they're uh, taking human organs and putting them into pigs to, to grow and then harvesting them. Plus, they are taking pig organs, like they're taking pig hearts and valves, heart valves, and trans, um, transplanting them into humans. You know, I don't know. I'm not saying it's true, but it's kind of an interesting thing. You know, I, I kind of wonder if, um, you know, the uh, fallen angels of Genesis 6 uh, were doing some kind of genetic study or genetic gene splicing stuff like what we're doing now. You know, when you uh, take a look at some of the ancient civilizations that existed prior to the flood and some of the artifacts that they found. I mean, ancient man in a lot of ways was not as primitive as they think. There's a place called Baalbek in Lebanon. They've got stones up high on a wall that weigh more than some of the old ocean liners, like the... Um, like the Titanic. You know, we don't have cranes that could pick up a Titanic and put it up like six foot high on a wall. And yet these stones weigh uh, like 1,200 tons and more. I mean, 1,200 tons. These stones are huge. Look at the pyramids. You know, you kind of wonder what's, uh, you know, the, of course, the History Channel, you know, ancient aliens. Yeah, they were aliens, all right. They were fallen angels. So, so you know, Lord doesn't want you eating pig. Is it a salvation issue? No. No, it's not what goes into the mouth. It's what comes out of your mouth. And we're not talking about vomiting, right? Now... What's needed for salvation? The Bible plainly declares, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. But in Acts 15 and verse 20, But we write unto them that, but we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols. You know, what are the uh, two commandments? So, uh, somebody asked Jesus, the great commandment in the law. All right, in Matthew chapter 22, verse 34, starting uh, 35. But then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, asked, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it: Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Okay, so love the Lord, love thy neighbor. Those are the that's basically the Ten Commandments in two. But in the book of Acts, verse 15 and 20, but we write unto them that they abstain from pollution of idols. Well, if you love the Lord, you're not going to worship an idol of a devil, right? And from fornication, and from things strangled, and from blood. Well, you know, um, the Lord, if, if you're going to commit fornication with a woman, get married, right? Or if you're going to commit fornication with a man, marry, get married. And from things strangled, I, I don't understand the, the strangle thing, but it was some kind of a, an occult thing. And from blood, drinking blood, or to abstain from blood. You're not supposed to eat blood. That's in the book of Leviticus. Uh, that's another occult type thing. And if you don't believe me, think about vampires. Acts 15, 29. That ye abstain from meats offered to idols. Ah, abstain from meats 
offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication, which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well, fare ye well. So you don't want to eat things offered to idols. You don't want to drink blood. You don't, you don't want to, you know, things strangled and from fornication. Acts 21, 25. As touching the Gentiles which believe, believe what? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. We have written and concluded that they observe no such thing. And he was talking about circumcision, okay, I believe. Save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols and from blood and from strangled and from fornication. I mean... That's not a heck of a lot of things. Uh, there's nothing there about circumcision, keeping the Sabbath, uh, keeping the feast days. No. And there's people that'll tell you, well, you know, Paul said that. He's a false apostle. Well, when you meet Paul one day, you can tell him to his face. And you're not, uh, and uh, I don't know. What can I tell you? I think Paul's for real. All right, back to Leviticus 11. Verse 9. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, in the seas and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, and all that move in the waters and of any living thing that is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. So, you know, fins and scales is all right. Um, sharks don't have scales. Manta rays don't have scales. Um, that excludes clams, octopus, seafood, eat, uh, like shrimp, you know, forbidden. Fish that have fins and scales are fair game. And, you know, I don't think it was so much of a salvation issue, but a health issue. People die from eating polluted shellfish. I mean, yeah, I know in the Pacific there are some fish that have fins and scales that if you eat them, uh, you can die. I think there's a puffer fish that the uh, Japanese consider a delicacy and and if you uh, if they make it wrong or cut some something some kind of a sack that gets some kind of a fluid on it you eat it you die I think it's a puffer fish or something in the Pacific but it's this is not in the Mediterranean and it's not in the Atlantic it's only found in the Pacific so I don't know but you know there's um, Leviticus 11 tells you the things that you can eat. Uh, verse 13. And these are they which shall ye shall have an abomination among the fowls, you know, the birds. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle and the ossifrage and the osprey and the vulture and the kite after his kind. Every raven after his kind. And the owl and the nighthawk and the cuckoo and the hawk after his kind. Um, you know, storks, herrings, the bat. Um, you know, and then it, you know, like it goes on and on and on and on. Uh, amphibians, things that creep. Um, and actually, believe it or not, you, we, um, verse 22 even these of them ye may eat, the locust after his kind, and the bald locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind. You know that? Uh, and then it tells you don't eat ferrets and chameleons and lizards and snails and, and the mole. Um, don't eat rats. You know, I don't think eating rats and vultures is healthy, okay? But that, that's the thing. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the, di the dietary laws in the Bible were for people's health. People eat things they're not supposed to. They get sick. 
And then when you ask the Lord to heal you, sometimes the answer is no, buddy. You know? Like I say, it's not a salvation issue. I don't think it is. My opinion. You know, the Greeks used to eat swine's flesh, and they got saved. But uh, I think, you know, I generally follow the clean meat things, but it, I don't do it for, you know, to be saved. I do it because I want to be healthy. And, you know, the fact that the uh, devils wanted to go into the swine, it kind of makes you, you know, when I read that, I, I kind of like, wow, bacon just kind of lost its appeal to me. But, you know, I'm not condemning you. Uh, do you like bacon? All right. So the Holy Spirit. Uh, now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, the last days, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Yeah, they're going to lie. Um, don't do what I do. Do what I say. The Pharisees were very good at that. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Forbidding to marry. I think that's coming. You know, all this, uh, well, the world's overpopulated. we got to have population control. And commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. It's not saying abstain from all meats. It's just saying abstain from meats offered to idols. Do you want to eat a meat, something that was offered to the devil? If you know it, you should avoid it. And I think you should be able to eat clean meats. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. So there you have it. All right, this is uh, Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ. All glory to him. In Jesus' name, amen.